今天我来问你一个真正简单个重要个问题。And this morning, allow me to ask you a very simple and important question. 你是在真爱成长吗 ？Do you really want to grow up? 你得答这个问题。You need to answer this question. 你记得这样代志。But remember that. 成长及长进是两样完全无相个代志。Growing old and growing up are two different things. Growing old 是你个孩子，拉来拉老。Growing old means that you Grow old in age. No one can prevent such a thing. And it's an inevitable thing that no one can prevent. But grow up is another thing. However, growing up is another thing. It means that you become more mature in your life. Some people it means that you become more mature in your life. Some people it means that you become more mature in your life. Some people it means that you become more mature in your life. Some people it means that you become more mature in your life. Some people it means that you become more mature in your life. Some people it means that you become more mature in your life. Because some believers they remain baby throughout their lives, 一生都真自私 ，and they they are selfish throughout their lives. 真够弯道 ，they turn to envy. 真罪够难还嘅 ，they have strives and quarrels. 因为嘅生命是 baby 嘅生命 ，and they remain babies throughout their lives. 因为 baby 是全世界第一 self-centered 嘅人 ，because babies are the most self-centered. Person in the world. However, for the church, we need to grow. Apostle Paul made this very important reminder to the church in Ephesus. In the book of Ephesians, chapter four, verse thirteen, until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we'll no longer be infants, tossed back and forth by the waves, and blown here and there by every wind of teaching, and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Because Apostle Paul warned us not to remain as spiritual children, we should grow and be mature in the fullness and likeness of Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, spiritual maturity is a personal choice, and no one can make the decision on your behalf. If you are willing to grow, the church can only help you in some way. Without your personal decision, we can do nothing for you. The church can do nothing for you. If you are willing to grow, the church can provide an environment for you to help you to grow. Remember the core values of our church. The first one intimacy with God is intimacy with God. The church can provide an environment to help you. If you do not wish to grow, no one can help you. If you wish to remain babies throughout your life, no one can change you. But remember that someday, every one of us will face the God. Will face God. How will you hold yourself accountable to God is your own problem. May God help us. Apostle Paul reminded us to redeem our time. Because our time is not much. If you do not make use of the time to grow and mature, someday, you will experience your own personal loss. If you are willing to grow, the church can help you. Today, allow me to share with you these four important principles. If you want to grow, it's not without any method. Number one, first, you need to feed your spiritual life. In 1 Peter 2, verse 2, like newborn babies, crave pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. Just like newborn babies, what do you need? You need spiritual milk. You need spiritual milk. And this is the word of God. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 5, verses 13 to 14, 
Anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness, but solid food is for the mature. You should not take milk throughout your life. For you will remain a baby. You need to grow. You need to have solid food. And you have uh, so, solid food. So you need to have spiritual milk and spiritual food. And when Jesus replied to Satan, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by the words that come out of God's mouth. God's word uh, uh, is represented as food. There's a reason. Whenever you take food for your physical body, the food will become energy for your life. In the same way, the word of God will be your spiritual strength. So, if you want to uh, uh, see spiritual growth in your life, the book, the Bible, should not depart from your hands. And Rick Warren make use of a hand uh, to uh, represent how you read, how you should read the Word of God. And I find this very meaningful. the word of God. Your last finger means that you hear the word of God. the word of God. And the ring finger means that uh, you read the word of God. And the, the middle finger means that they study the word of God. memorize the word of God. And the pointer uh, remind you to memorize the word of God. think, meditate the word of God. And your tongue reminds you to think or meditate on the word of God. Take a palm to the bell, apply, apply application. And the palm means that you need to apply you all this in your life. Grab the word of God. How do you grab the word of God? You need to do these six things. Here. To hear. Read. And to read. Study. To study. Memorize. To memorize. Think. And meditate. To think, and to meditate. Apply. Then you apply. All these are six very important things that you need to do. Today, as we discuss about reading the Word of God, in the future, if you have time, we will uh, cover the other five. So, with the Word of God, how should we read the Word of God? A few years ago, as we started this dig deep. deep uh, movement. We encourage everyone to read the entire Bible in three years' time. Some may find this exercise very simple. Yes. 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 But Nina Sali but Jong singing taxi bai. However, if you still fail to read through the entire Bible in three years' time, it may only prove that you refuse to grow. You want to remain baby throughout your life. And here no one can help you. Even God cannot help you. You know why? Why? Because God has provided us with a free will. If you really do not want, no one can help you. It's so simple to read through the Bible in three years' time. If you really want to improve, yes. Today, uh, let me share you share with you another method. If you really read through the Bible at least once in your life, then you should not remain in reading the Bible, uh, reading from Genesis to Revelation. This will not help you anymore. Because you may forget what you have read. Let me tell you how to read it. Let me tell you how to read. Uh, today, as we begin the month of July, so July, so July 2, okay. tomorrow, beginning tomorrow, Monday, Monday, you read a particular book. Let me recommend the book of Philemon. The book Philemon. Philemon right? There's only one chapter. Tomorrow, you read that particular book five times. It's just but a chapter, very short. Five times, okay? Read that chapter five times. Tuesday. And Tuesday? 
Go thật five times. Repeat the cycle by reading it five the times. The same book. The same book. Tại sao? Wednesday. Go thật five times. Another five times. Tại si. And on Thursday. Tại cô. Friday. Thật cao bài lạc. Until Saturday. Sunday day off. And then Sunday you can take a rest. So it's from Monday to Saturday. From Monday to Saturday. You just read one book. You just focus on one book. The book of Phenomenons. And that's the book that you need to read. Read the love by Jabo. How many times should you have read? Read the love Thirty times. Even if you cannot memorize that particular chapter, but I guarantee, but I guarantee that you will be more familiar about this book than before. This is the way I read the Bible. This is what I learned in the Hong Kong. So let me go find them and go submit. If you ask me what that book is talking about, I can tell you. Go what Tang Kadi Kong. Even though I cover the Bible. See then what Tang Kadi Kong. On the second week. Tang Kadi Kong. What book should you read? Remember, command you. You got a Kengi. You Tai Su. The book of Jude. Only one chapter. It's similar in the one chapter. The same method. San Juan and Hong Kong. Monday. Three by it. Up to Saturday. Four by luck. You read it five times every day. After that, you will have read through thirty times. On the third week, I will command you. Second John. Second John. Only one chapter. Only one chapter. The same method. In the same method. Five times a day. Did it go five? And six days later, on the fourth week, I will command you. You go like Kengi. Third John. The same method. And the same method. Imagine. Within one week's time, one month's time, you would have read through four books in the New Testament within a month's time. Maybe you say, Pastor, it's so long. What should I do? For example, for the longer books, the book of Acts, twenty-eight chapters. How can I read that? Let me ask you a question. If you uh, find a very long piece of hot dog, how will you eat that? Will you swallow it in one bite? Then you may die. What should you do? What should you do? Take a knife and cut that piece into several pieces. The same method. The same way. Book of Acts. In the book of Acts. Four weeks. See the Tao teach you. One to seven. You begin by reading the first seven chapters. Every day, Tao teach you. You read these seven chapters. Every day, Tao teach you. Once every day. Tao lak lit. After six days. Li tao lao lak bai. You would have covered it six times. The second week. The second week. Eight to fourteen. The second portion, chapters eight to fourteen. Fifteen to twenty-one. And then fifteen to twenty-one. Twenty-two to twenty-eight. Twenty-two to twenty-eight. After one month. A month later. Book of Acts, Li tao lao lak bai. You would have covered the entire book of Acts six times. Let me tell you. You will understand and know the book of Acts more than before. Two or three years thereafter. Your knowledge and your grasp of the whole Bible will be different than before. Why do you need to read Bible in that way? We need to absorb in great quantity the word of God. You know why? We submit. It becomes the input. To change the system in your life. Because every person you have your own system for life. The way how you talk, the way how you do things, and the way how you tackle interpersonal relationships, all of this moves within the system that you have. Whatever you absorb and receive, those things will eventually come out. For example, for example, green joke. People who tend to crack green jokes. You know why? We submit. This person may have heard so many green jokes. Read many green jokes. And it became his system. And in his conversation or speech, all of a sudden words would come out. Even if they may not be as bad. For example. Just for example. You love to watch this Korean series, and you watch TV or every day. Few years later, you will realize that your system have changed, 
unconsciously. However, those who surround you may, may know. And they will see you as being an emotional person. Korean series are so emotional. Even without watching the series, you will know the end. Two persons loving each other. One of them will die of cancer. Then they will die. And you will shed tears. Those who love Korean series, uh, they have so much tears to shed. Let me tell you, those tears have no value. I will not be against your crying. But those tears will not be remembered by God. Those who shed tears for God's churches, those who will shed tears for the sake of your own spiritual life, those tears will, will be remembered by God. Whatever you input in your life will become a manifestation of your life. That's why we need to absorb and receive God's word in great quantity to become the first principle behind our spiritual growth. Secondly, we should practice spiritual discipline. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 7 to 8 have nothing to do with godless myths and, God and old wives' tales. Rather, train yourselves to be godly. Train yourselves to be godly. For physical training is of some value, but godliness has value for all things, holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. We need to train ourselves in, uh, to, to be godly in the same way that our physical body needs training. May I ask, if you want to be healthy, do you need to train? Of course. You need to uh, engage in sports. You need to have self-control. You should not eat carelessly and avoid salty and oily stuff for they may be very unhealthy. Uh, those of you who uh, have three-in-one coffee business, please don't get mad at me. Avoid three-in-one coffees. It will harm your health. You know why? Why? There's a, a plan to uh, engage in three-in-one coffee in the past. But after making some studies, uh, we decided not to pursue. It's not good for the health. More than 80% will be sugar. You are not drinking coffee, you are drinking those sugar water. It's not good for health. It's not good for your health. If you want to enjoy a healthy life, do you need to train? Should you be disciplined? Of course. In the same way with your spiritual life. Why do we have 40 days of prayer? To help you practice having the daily devotion and prayer life. And we talk about devotion. I believe that you have devotions in your life. Hopefully, hopefully. It's alright if you have your own ways of having your devotion. Otherwise, let me teach you this method. Spend time with God. The main principle behind your daily devotion is to spend time with God. That's why it's not not as simple as reading the Bible. It provides a time for you to interact with God and establish your own personal relationship with Him. If you have not started yet, let me teach you this method. Even if you have your own ways, it's alright. And this method 
could be learned from the book of Isaiah chapter 6. In the book of Isaiah chapter 6, in his vision, Prophet Isaiah saw God. And there he established a very intimate relationship with God. The first thing he did was change your focus. You need to change your focus. In Chapter 6, verse 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord seated on a throne, high and exalted. When the prophet Isaiah saw the death of his earthly king, he lost hope. All of a sudden, he sees his heavenly king seated high and exalted on the throne. Even if the earthly king has died, the heavenly king remained alive. As prophet Isaiah shifted his focus from his earthly king to his heavenly king, this is the first step in his personal devotion. We need to change from earthly things to the heavenly things. Each day as you wake up, Focus your attention and your energy from earthly things and change it to the earthly things. Let me tell you, you just need one minute. You just need one minute. It's a spiritual thing. As you quiet down yourself, as you put aside all your household chores. Do not mind your children nor your spouse. And focus your attention in God. And change from earthly matters to earthly matters. And quiet yourselves beside Just God. One minute. Just for one minute. Refocus Refocus and renew your energy in God. Number two. Secondly, when Prophet Isaiah saw heaven, and he saw the so the sound of voices of the angels. They were calling to one another, "Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty." As he Prophet Isaiah saw how the angels worship God. As he focused himself before God, and you can praise God. It's another thing whether you sing well or not. It's all right. It's more important that you have this song of praise in your heart. And sometimes as you hum those uh, songs, you might have forgotten some lyrics. Okay, okay, it's just all right. All of us are like that. Most of us would remember only the first, uh, first uh, verse. Oh, now friend we have in Jesus. Okay, okay, okay. you to see us, so then you forget the rest. God knows what you're singing. Remember that. If you will only sing songs and praise God on Sundays, you are not really worshiping God. Your personal worship. This is the real worship. Prepare your time as you worship God. Thirdly, when Prophet Isaiah began his worship and he heard the songs of praise, all of a sudden he discovered that that he is a man of unclean lips. And he lived among a people of unclean lips. And that's why he cried out, Woe to me! And when God sent his angels and put a live call in his, on his lips, so Whenever we come before God, as you examine yourselves, in which area uh, have you sinned against God? In which area have you uh, transgressed against your human being? You pray carefully and confess your sins. 
After that, 开始读经祈祷。Then you start reading the word of God and pray. You get it. Talking, Kido. Remember, read the Bible and pray. Join Kido and Sing King. Liam Joy together. Combine reading the word the word of God and praying together. This is read Sing King and the first time read Yah Joy Sing King is completely missing. Ah, this time your reading the Bible is different from the previously recommended method. You need to read Yah Joy Sing King. You need not read many verses. Also, read the chapter is okay. Sometimes it's all right to just read one verse. Good enough. Or a few verses is good enough. But in La Tak, La Su Xiong, La Su Xiong, La Ti Do. The more you read these verses, the more you meditate and pray, and the more you pray, the more you think about the Word of God. For example, just for example, Si Ben Dep Sa Pi, Psalm twenty-three. You read the first verse. Okay, good enough. It's all right to read the first verse. The Lord is my shepherd; I shall not be in want. Yah Hua Si Guo Ai Bok Jia, Wo Jia Kak Bo Ti Gao Kiam Ke. Go read the first verse. After you read through the law is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. Yeah, ho ho, si guai bok jiao, wo jia kang bo ti gao kiang ke. And you think about this verse. What does this verse mean? So you get to bang the this this singing just like me. Put yourself in this particular verse. Yeah, ho ho, si tiu guo kiang ke bok jia. And claim that verse to be your personal verse. Shong de ya gam xia li. God, I thank you. Who am I? That the heavenly Father is willing to be your shepherd. Mo me gam me pui de. Am I worthy of such? Is God my shepherd? That He becomes your personal shepherd. Not just yours, but mine. Be my personal. And be my personal shepherd. I shall not be in want. What I have brought, come, come. We praise God. 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 Come, come. We In the Philippines, everything my heart desires, God has provided. Not only do did He give me that thing, but more than enough. God, you're really my shepherd, and forever I will be your servant. As you pray, as you read the Word of God, the more you pray, the more you read the Word of God. Because devotion is spend time with God. It doesn't matter how much verses you read. But after you read the word of God and after you pray, respond to God's word with prayer. And when Prophet Isaiah heard what God told him, who shall I send and who will go for us? He said, "Gong Zhu, I am I. What is it?" Prophet Isaiah replied or responded by saying, "Here am I." He 回应上帝 And that's the way how he responded to God's call. 每早起等你领受以后 After your daily devotion each day, 用这个祈祷来回应上帝跟你讲的话 Respond to God's word with a prayer. It's an exercise. This is very important. Whether you read the Bible, whether you're in devotion, even if you read through the Bible many times, there's only one reason behind this. So that you can put the word of God in your heart. In Psalm 119, it says that. I put your word in my heart that I may not sin against you. Whenever the word of God is in your heart, the Holy Spirit will speak to you by His word. As you face it, stays temptation. Whenever you're faced with temptation, the word of God will appear. At that time, you can you should make a decision whether to obey or not to obey. Some people, after hearing, they disobeyed. For example, just for example. Today, as you go out, as you see a person with a long hair, and uh, the person walk carefully, you want to pursue and you want to take a look. The Holy Spirit talk to you. You should watch your heart. More than anything else, you should not continue. And you can respond by saying, "Sorry, God, I will not pursue." Or you disobey. You run after the person. After you run to the person, and you realize that 
That person is a male. I've told you from the start. The Holy Spirit has warned you, and yet you refuse to listen. Without the word of God in your heart, who can help you? May the Lord help us. We should speak spiritual system support. God created the heaven and earth in six days' time. Good. Every day, God concluded His creation with, uh, by saying it's good. However, when you come to Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, the Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. It's not good. The first time it appeared in the Bible when God said it's not good. It's not His creatures. Not good. To be alone. But it's not good to be alone. It's not good to remain by yourself. No one can share your joys and no one can sympathize with your pains. It does not talk about marriage only. But in our lives, it's like that. We need a companion. In the Bible, uh, there's the truth of one another. Uh, several times the word one another appeared. Love one another. Serve one another. Forgive one another. Encourage one another. Look after each other. Share with one another. Those who studied the Bible shared with us that one another. This words one another appeared 56 times in the Bible. And it only showed us that the Bible clearly realized that we cannot survive by our own. You needed me in the same way I needed you. This is one another. It's the uh, uh, truth of one another. Acts chapter 2. In the book of Acts chapter 2. After the Holy Spirit came upon them. 3,000 people converted. And what did these people do? In Acts chapter 2 verse 42. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. And to fellowship and to the breaking of bread and to prayer. They, this Satan and three thousand, they devoted themselves to the apostle teaching, the word of God, to fellowship. fellowship. The word fellowship in the original context. It means koinonia. Koinonia is it, koinonia. It means sharing with each other, supporting each other, helping one another. The 3,000 early believers in the church, early church, exercised this truth. The book of Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 to 25. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. We should not stop meeting. And we encourage each other, we support one another in these meetings. Dear church, we need a supportive group. So we came into a life group. You need a life group. You should also find yourselves an accountability partner. If no one will look after you, no one will rebuke you. Then you will never improve in your life. There's a very big church in South Korea. It's a Presbyterian church. Though there are so, so many elders, however, two specific elders were elected. And these two elders will do no other functions other than who 
Whenever the pastor would travel overseas or travel anywhere by himself, one among the two should accompany the pastor. Because they, dis- they will not allow the pastor to travel on his own. Of course, whenever you talk about the church ministry, one of the two elders will accompany the pastor. You know why? So that the pastor will not travel on his own and do some careless things. <laughs> not bad. <laughs> Maybe I need to elect one uh, person. Now, not only should pastors have such a person. How about you? Dini. You know, it's very dangerous for you to be traveling on your own. Especially those of you who love to travel to China, you should not go by yourself. Bring your wife. Or maybe ask your child to accompany you. Bring a companion. Maybe you'll say it's alright. Even if it's alright for you, but to some other women, it may not. You need an accountability partner in your life. May God help you. You need to join a supportive group that may help you. The last. Finally, you need to make spiritual commitment. In, in Joshua's old age, he called all the leaders, the, 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 the judges of the Israel tribe, the elders. the elders. And Joshua told them, Now fear the Lord and serve Him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods of your, ancest- the un- your ancestors' worship beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord mean- seems undesirable to you, then... Choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the God your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in, whom, in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. What did Joshua do? Joshua called the Israelites and asked them to make an important decision. You choose which God you want to serve. The gods of your ancestors? The gods of Egypt? Or the gods in the land of Canaan? Make your own choice. Make your choice. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Dear church, your feet should not be on two sides. You need to choose one. Joshua has already made his decision. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Serving God is like God. In the same way, your spiritual growth and maturity. You need to make your own personal decision. After you choose, you should be committed to your choice. You need to be responsible for the decisions you've made. But in reality, you are making decisions every day of your life. Early in the morning as you wake up, you may want to choose to have rice or bread as your breakfast. And these are choices you make daily. Even if you decide to have breakfast or not, it's also a decision. These are minor decisions and not as important. But however, some other choices are very important and serious that you should not be careless about. For example, those of you who are still single, as you choose your lifetime partner, you should not be careless about this. It's the second most important decision that you've ever made in your life. The first decision is to decide whether to believe or not to believe in God. That decision will affect and influence your eternity. Whether you live forever or you die in eternity. 
in marriage will affect your present life. The right partner will uh, ensure you uh, a smooth life. If you choose the wrong partner, you will suffer throughout your life. And that's the reason why you will not make careless decisions. In the same way with our spiritual life, you need to make this very important decision. Let me ask you this question. Three years later, what kind of a Christian do you want to be? Do you want to remain as Christian babies? Or do you want to grow? This is your choice. The choice is yours. If you prefer to remain as spiritual babies, no one can help you. However, if you refuse to remain as infants, if you want to grow, if you have this desire in your heart, not only can the church be able to help you, God will help you. Just read this particular verse. For if the willingness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. In your heart, if you are willing to grow and to pursue, and you will find God acceptable, God will help you. Unless you want to grow, then even God cannot help you. However, if you want to grow, you need to pay the cost of your spiritual growth. You want to be physically healthy. Do you need to pay the cost? Of course. You should in exercise. You need to swim. Or you need to engage in sports. You know where our problem is? <laughs> if you exercise today, you will uh, rest for the next three weeks. Often, uh, p- p- uh, people will ask me this question. Pastor, how many times each week do you engage in sports? On a regular basis, at least twice, most often three times each week. You know how many years? I've been doing this for the last 20 years. That's why look at me. I have no stomach. Oh, yeah. thank you, thank you, thank you. I've, it's a product of 20 years of exercise. Other brothers, you might have all sorts of bowls with your stomach. continue to do it. You should continuously do it. You need to pay the consequence or price for your physical health. Not only in the matter of health, in everything. For example, marriage. If you want to have a good marriage, what should you do? What should you do? You should uh, strive and pay the cost. Uh, a, a low student uh, was given this assignment by his teacher and he was asked to listen or to participate uh, or to, to listen to how a judge would make decision inside a court. And one day as he entered this court, and the court he entered uh, specialized in divorce cases. And when he entered it in the morning, lunch break, uh, after lunch break, he resumed. That's why he remained in the court for the whole day. And the judge noticed the young man was there all throughout. And after the day is over, the judge asked somebody to call this young man into his office. And he told the young man, I've noticed that you've been here throughout the day. Are you a low student? Yes, master. And uh, the, the young man replied, yes. 
。你咪睇佢心地。何光系啲江青弟子。我哋自己嘅 court 已经十几年啦啦。I've been serving in this court for the last ten over years。我已经主持了 more than 一千呢婚姻呢追诉礼拜啦啦。I've already conducted the necrological service or memorial service for marriages more than a thousand times。我看睇人正大字。I discovered that。婚姻嘅問題其實只換自己。There's only a singular reason behind marital problems。也最兩難最好嘅婚姻嫁結嘅出嚟啦。Many people thought or imagine that good marriage will happen automatically。You know。You're wrong。你講好嘅婚姻未嫁結出現啊，好嘅婚姻需要盡力去追啊。Good marriage does not just happen; it takes hard work from both parties. Now, 婚姻是安尼。If that's the way with one's marriage, 那那属灵的生命也是安尼。In the same way, our spiritual lives. 你唔拿做新做了，你灵性啊，拉拉拉拉，慢慢拉拉拉好了。You should not think that immediately after you become a a believer, your spiritual life will improve. 你需要 pay the price. You need to pay the price. You need to have an intimacy relationship. If you want to enjoy intimate relationship with God, you need to have a lot of time. How much time you're willing to spend to read the Word of God? How much time are you willing to spend to pray? And how much time are you willing to spend to pray? To give up in order to have intimate relationship with your God. Forty days of prayer. The next forty days of prayer. Just the holy hearts. Will allow us to learn how to be committed in God. The strong, the small group are like me. In your small groups. The kiddo are like me. In your prayer meetings. The strong, the weak are like me. In the Word of God. Do you really want to grow up? Sim si guan yi xiang jiang. This is the answer. The choice is yours. No one can help you make that choice. No one can help you make that choice. You need to be committed to God. You need to be committed to God. You need to be committed. To your personal choice. May the Lord help us. Next Sunday, as we begin our forty days of prayer, so that we may be deeply rooted in the Word of God. May the Lord help us. Let's pray. 天君的天父上帝，阮所属奉，阮所敬拜的上帝，今日感谢你的话语，透过你忠心的仆人。对阮讲话，求主你赦免阮以前无忠心，伫阮诶灵修生活，真侪时阵，阮顺探阮家己肉体诶需要，阮听探阮家己诶声音，无好好伫主你话语扎根，恳求你加再一摆帮助阮，互你诶话语成做阮生命诶诶诶诶美牛，互阮每一个人有法通伫主你内面成长。强大圣灵，满有基督强盛的信仰，何叫阮的好行为，甲阮所讲所做，归荣耀和伫天顶的上帝。阮恭敬将阮每一位交托，求主你的圣灵，实在帮助阮，实在鼓励阮。安尼基督靠耶稣的名来求。Amen, amen.